Are you wanting to make the most of your fertility in 2020? Then this is for you. What's happening uh, over the next couple of weeks leading up until January the 1st, 2020 is so powerful. There are some really incredible, powerful uh, portal points. One on the 12th of the 12th. Uh, I'm not sure that this video is going to get out there in time for that. But um, the 12th of the 12th is lining up with the 1111 energy that came through. It's also lining up with the 21st of December as well. So what is coming up for a lot of people around this time is uh, a lot around shame and guilt, also to do with um, any of our shadow aspects. Maybe it isn't shame and guilt for you, but any shadow aspects that you have been pushing down and submerging. It's all coming up right now to come through the portal way with you basically holding your hand. Um, we can't keep submerging this stuff and allowing it to have the keys to our vehicle because while we're allowing this to happen, um, we are not in the driver's seat, basically. Something else is driving us and, it, and it's in our subconscious and it's that stuff that we can't face up to. You know, it's either coming from our childhood or it could be deeper than that. It could be ancestral. It could be coming through your mother's line, your father's line, something you're carrying within your DNA. If you believe in karma, it could be a karmic uh, patterning coming through. Or alternatively, if you believe beyond karma, perhaps it's a multidimensional pattern that's coming through for you to clear right here and right now. And perhaps this is leading to issues with pregnancy, with fertility. But these portal points are, are really um, powerful for us. They're powerful opportunities for us to be watching and observing what is going on for us. Um, so for me, I, I always look at what's triggering me. I'm the queen of reaction. My partner will tell you that. I'm really good at reacting. <laughs> it's something, it's my life's work, I believe. But um, so, and I'm also a yoga teacher, as you know, Fiona. So I'm, I'm continually working on being in that role of the observer, that role of the witness, um, and observing my mind and observing my triggers. So noticing, you know, what is creating this raw emotion and then having a look at it from the perspective of, okay, yeah, there's a situation in this 3D illusion that we call reality and then from there okay does this have any reflection within my past is there a memory related to this perhaps when I was a child from there can I take it back any further did my mum have behaviors like this or does this come from my father or my mother's mother my father's mother and then from there do I have a skerrick of a past life memory that's coming through? So I, uh, for me, I believe that um, this is the new way forward for humanity and we're going to be dealing with things a lot more like this into 2020 and beyond. But here is our beginning opportunity to really look at um, what is triggering us, what is... What is below all of that? What are the emotions? And oftentimes if these are related to shame and guilt, they're going to keep us bound. Or uh, there's a lady named Rebecca Dawson who put out an email um, and it was, she's an Australian, she does a lot of work internationally. And I really resonated with what she said in her email. It came out about a week ago. Um, it was very, very relevant for the work that I've been doing in my one-on-one -on -one consultations as well. And because a lot of people have been bringing up these stories that they just can't transcend. And a lot of the time these stories are based in shame and guilt and it's kind of like shame and guilt, she says, are like the bouncers that stand at the doorway between us and freedom, you know, if it, for those of you that still go to nightclubs or whatever, you know, I, I just see this vision of them going, nah, back, you know, to the back of the line or, or no, you're just not coming in at all, you're too drunk or whatever, you know. So 
she's saying to us, and I thoroughly I agree with this, wholeheartedly agree with this, like just to look at shame and guilt in the eye, look the bounces in the eye and just go, yeah, I see you, you're doing a great job, but I'm still walking through and I'm still walking through, you're coming through with me. Love that. So, Love yeah, that. And, so and that's, that's... Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to introduce you to everyone that's watching. Mandy is a dear friend of mine in Australia. Uh, we're both from Perth. And I feel like I just know you far better now since reading your amazing book. I fell in love with the cover more than anything. That's what drew me to your book. But I, I, it's such a page turner. I love everything that you write about with your journey, how you are just a very normal person, having a lot of fun. Okay, yes, you're very intelligent and in the top levels at school, but you were very bold and saying, I'm going to try anything and everything in life. And, and that's what you do. And I love that about you and reading your journey and how you've really embodied yoga, but not the yoga that's just the asanas, the postures that we're used to in the West, the true essence of yoga, Patanjali's eight limbs of yoga, which is all about um, living in that high resonance of truth and being the best version of you that you can access bliss or what we call samadhi. I've got terrible Sanskrit pronunciation, so please ignore my pronunciation. But what I wanted to do is invite Mandy to this channel to help you if you're on your fertility journey and you're struggling to get over these little hurdles, particularly at the end of 2019. Um, can you still see me? Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. I lost you for a minute. to see your beautiful face again. Oh, great. And my screen blacked up for a second. So, yes, helping, helping all the viewers to transcend what you were saying, these, these blockages which do block fertility because anything that blocks our well-being prevents us from being in a state of harmony. And we need to be in that state of harmony because everything moves in harmonic frequencies. So when we are balanced and in that state of harmony, we can connect to source, to our baby, to the divine, to be the best version of us. And what can be blocking us is often the shame and the guilt. And even if, like Mandy said, you don't recognize the shame or the guilt, it's often something that can be there. And it's worth you taking this time during these specific portal moments, which is, what Mandy was saying on the 12th of December and then the 21st of December, where we can access through these portals, these energetic portals. It's a great time to meditate and help you to transcend to then be the better version of you. So we can start clearing these blockages because that's what can cause hurdles. Why aren't you getting pregnant? Because there are often physical, mental and or emotional blockages that are preventing you. So on that note, Mandy, back over to you back over to me okay uh i don't know that i want what i want to say from here fiona um <laughs> thank you for mentioning my work. yeah uh, most of my work over the last 10 years and i think that this is important to recognize as well as we move into 2020 is that uh it's the end of a decade and this book basically writes about um yeah i mean i started well I started writing that book in my mind probably when I was 23 and that was a really long time ago. Um, but the most of the majority of that book relates to the last decade for me. And that was where a lot of my deeper learnings really came in and where I really started striving wholeheartedly uh, with every step that I took with the majority of choices that I made to be the best version of me. Um, and, and I think I really, I really resonate with what you were saying in relation to that perhaps being a fertility block, you know, um, yeah, definitely. If, if we're not loving on ourselves and if we don't like who we see, then how are we offering a beautiful loving space for another being to drop into yeah exactly. Mm. Exactly. so what can yeah. you do on the 12th and the 21st and what does this mean if you're in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere well on the 12th it's a, it's a good idea to be putting a call out a uh, psychic call or gathering your friends if you like um, 
and just connecting in with like-minded people or putting in a call, putting a call out to those that resonate at the same frequency as you. It's also a good opportunity for you just to sit in meditation or do some guided meditation um, to take some time out to really reflect. Like I would really be reflecting over the last decade as well, perhaps looking at some of the recurring stories that have continued for you over the last decade and to really harvest all of that rich juiciness that you've learned. So glean the gold from mm. what you've learned in the last decade and be willing to let go of that which no longer serves you. So both of those portal points are really important for that and leading up until the 31st of uh, December. Um, now, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, as you are, I always get confused with that for some reason. I'm, I'm getting my head around it. You're, you're heading into the winter solstice. So that's retreating into the cave. And that's like, you know, really taking the time out to diarise and think about that, um, what you want to seed and grow. And, and this is really resonant with fertility. Whereas for us in the Southern Hemisphere, we're moving into our summer solstice. And for us, that is really, um, it's an outwards time. You know, the sun is shining. I said to you when we were offline before, we're going through a run of 40 degree days, which is why I'm sitting here. <laughs> and yeah, so for us, you know, we're really stepping into our shininess, um, holding a beautiful women's ceremony here in Perth um, at a venue called Northside Hub. And I'm called to uh, be offering like a maypole. My partner was saying to me, it's not May. Yeah, he's like, it's not May. And I'm like, no, but I feel like the, uh, the pole... Um, symbolic of, of the masculine and then if we have our ribbons mm -hmm. uh, wrapped around oh we can interweave and for me 2020 is a balancing year of everything coming back into balance as well with the two twos mm -hmm. so um it feels really important for me for the women to be interweaving with the divine masculine so that'll be the symbolic uh representation of that but I really feel like as women and a lot of the work that I do uh, with these ceremonies is really calling for women to drop into that softness. I feel that um, because I, I, I studied women's studies at university and I was a crusader for the feminist movement and um, it, was, it was beyond burning the bra. I'm not that old, but, you know, I was... And I've been big on women being able to do whatever they wanted, you know. But I feel now, and I still believe that, we can do whatever we want, but I feel that perhaps we've um, become too super, if you know what I mean. We need to drop a little. We've almost made our men um, not required because we can do everything. So I feel that we need to soften a little more into that femininity to allow our men to step up and really hold that masculinity as well as being in touch with their own feminine side as well. So that's, that's a big part of the work that I do with women. Yeah, that's really important. And I personally have been misquoted by the media for this, but it's so true. It's about helping the man become more masculine and you being open and soft, you the female, because that soft opening of that heart energy is connected directly to the womb. And if you're wanting to be a magnet for baby to come to you, it's not about fighting and fighting and striving and striving with that masculine energy. We need the masculine to be there to support you so that you can open, soften and flourish. That's that's the fundamental difference. So I am 100% with you. It's all about that energy flow, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and really opening through the heart. Yeah, definitely opening through the heart and really tuning in. So I guess, you know, these portal points are a really important time for us to tune in and listen, not to the mind, 
to that intuition yes. and allow, you know, for different people that comes through at different times. You know, sometimes I get my best messages when I'm in the shower, which is, I don't know, but sometimes I do. A I do. the time for me. You do too. I, I support yeah. all inspiration. I get all the divine messages there. Yeah. Or when I'm practicing my yoga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah, when I'm practicing yoga or, or just going for a walk, stuff will start to drop in. And, and when I was writing that last report that you read, uh, which I have spoken a little to, that, yeah, when I'm walking or when I'm doing, actually dishes is quite good. I don't know whether dishes works for you as well, but when I'm generally doing something that is mindless, yes. I guess. Yes. Inspiration. You know, when I've, yeah, yeah, stepped beyond where the mind is in the driver's seat and the ego perhaps or whatever, where, where I'm just, yeah, caught in the movement. Yes. 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 And when I mention yeah. inspiration, it's, it's message from spirit. And so for a lot of my clients, it's when their baby that's hovering, that's why they're so desperate for the baby. They can sense the baby's hovering. And that's when baby can commune when they're doing something mundane, like the dishes or having a shower where they're just open to receive that message. Mm -hmm. And it is being open, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff we were blocked from as children. I mean, because we were born with all of being able to see beyond all of the veils. We, we could see absolutely everything, but none of that was normalized for most of, most of us. And often I believe that's what creates a lot of the nightmares that children are having is because they're actually still seeing things and it hasn't been normalized for them. But I noticed that when I talk to young children and say, oh, are you having visitors? straight away they start talking about the visitors that they're seeing and, and that you can see the hope in their eyes and they're grasping for some kind of understanding in it. So, yeah, yeah I feel like um, that's a big step is, is reopening yourself to really trust those messages and mm -hmm. to um, understand that you're not actually going crazy. Yeah. You're not yeah. like... <laughs> actually normal it's very normal but we've been socialized to believe that it's not normal but yeah. we all have a sense we all have a very strong sense of guidance that intuitive guidance system and when you start working with it which you will do on your fertility journey it's it's just a beautiful gift it's not something to be afraid of anymore mm. yeah absolutely on any journey Mm. really on your life journey as soon as you start working with that. I mean, I've solely worked with that over the last 10 years and my life has unfolded so magically that I couldn't write it better if I tried and um, <laughs> I'm a pretty good storyteller, apparently. You are. You are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited to be doing this work with you, Fiona, and to be checking in with you monthly um yeah i'll be excited to step more into the january the 2020 vibe that comes yep. through with january um yeah i know that for me i'm not sure about you but i know that uh i thought 2019 was going to be somewhat easier and i yep. feel like we've been saying every year um yep. and i'm not sure that in the way that it unfolded, it was sure there were some magical things that have unfolded for me this year, but it, it has been hard work. There's been yeah. a lot of hard personal development work that has gone on. And, and I know that for a lot of the time for me, I've felt quite insular. You know, mm -hmm. I've needed to really retreat back in. Yes. Um, and, and really reflect and... Lots of lots of lessons coming up for me. Lots of really deep lessons, uh, particularly because. Do you know anything about where your Chiron's placed? Are you? Well, your what place? I would place? say Chiron. I, I my Chiron's in Aries, so therefore it's an interesting thing for you to Google where your Chiron is. It's based on when you were born, and f so for me one of my really big woundings or lessons is around um, rejection or exclusion. 
Right, which is what you had with your mum. You had that feeling with your mum. Totally. So we we just beautifully, absolutely, you know, we dialed each other in so beautifully in the lessons that we taught one another. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So spell that. Cryon, did you say? Chiron. I think, I'm pretty sure it's C-I-R-O-N. Okay, so people yeah. can Google that and understand more about their personality type. Yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, another thing that I thoroughly recommend is Richard Rudd's work, uh, Gene Keys, genekeys.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll add that link to this video as well. Yeah, yeah, I thoroughly recommend that. It, the Gene Keys had been around me for like four or five years and I had the book and I'd done the online free thing and that's it. I had these numbers in this chart that I had no understand, no idea of what it actually meant. And then, you know, we, we, well, we watched for the signs. Like all of a sudden, all around me, I had someone on Facebook going, oh, my goodness, I've had the Gene Keys book for four years and I'm just looking at it and I'm blown away. And I thought, oh, I've been doing that too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, someone else came up with, with another thing about Gene Keys. Oh, I think someone came and visited us and they were talking about Gene Keys. And then I went to bed that night and John was in bed reading the Gene Keys book and I was going, oh, okay, I get the message. Yeah. So when I started reading it, reading out every second sentence, just going, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. So it was incredibly, incredibly eye-opening for me. I just resonated so deeply it was, it's a really great tool for personal growth and develop yeah definitely yeah. Include that in this link so just to sum up then for people who are in the northern hemisphere it's a time to be retreating in a cave and to be introspective look at ways that you know you're wanting to to clear things that you're not happy about and you're ready just to let it go don't you don't need to hold on to it anymore especially issues around shame and guilt, just honoring them, which I've got a, a, in my online course, a beautiful Buddhist meditation called Sitting with Emotions. And you just allow those emotions to come up. You don't push any emotions away because you can be expansive and hold every emotion that is possible here on planet Earth. And then so if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, like a lot of clients in Australia and New Zealand and even in Singapore, and, and basically that's a time where you're shining, you're being outward like the sun, you're being out there. So you can still spend time meditating though, and that's what I want to just remind everyone that on the 12th and the 21st of December, still use this time to, like you said, gather your friends or be introspective yourself and just connect within. Use that time to meditate, to be still, and just allow things to clear because I feel, and I, I, I'm sure you're the same, there's a lot of excitement building for 2020. This is going to be an amazing year for so many people. We all thought 2019 was going to be great and had our ups and downs, but 2020, there's a big momentum of excitement as 2019, it's the end of a, of a cycle, isn't it? It's the end of a time. So we've got the destruction going on, the cleansing, the purifying. So let's use this time to cleanse and purify with nature and then from the 1st of January, we are just going to hit the ground running with our hearts open, really being a renewed sense of self. And, and what I find can help is if you use an aid like frankincense, can you see that? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. This is the powerfully pure frankincense, and it is exactly that. It's, it's from uh, Kenya, and it's all organic and wild. So it's amazing. It's a very high vibrational. It's... It's as powerful as, as gold and we're working with vibration. Oh, it's, it's cleansing, isn't it? It's, what, it's anti-negativity. It's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. It is phenomenal. So using a kind of um, thing like frankincense when you're meditating, something to stimulate your senses to put yourself into that healing mode, which is what fertility requires. So we need to be in that healing mode, the receive mode, which is what meditation allows us to do. So on that note, do you have anything else to add, Mandy, to the audience today? Uh, I would just say, yeah, when they're coming through the portal, bring through yep. all of yourself. Love all of yourself. Love all of it. It yep. is all who you are. You yeah, know, love you. We don't both. need any parts of ourselves. It's, it's just a human experience. 
Yeah. It is just an exploration within a human body. And we all have stories. We all have stories. And it's just a matter of transcending these, you know. Yeah. It's just a matter of no longer allowing those stories to rule your life. No. Well, exactly. Yeah. Your, it's all fine. We're all it, human. Yeah, exactly. And it's so easy to define ourselves with stories, but this, they're not real. They're just constructs of our mind. And the only thing that's real is in our heart. And so if we can okay. navigate with our heart in 2020, then we're going to be yes. so connected to source, to baby, to being in flow with all that we desire, all the love and joy that life has to offer. Yeah. Sounds beautiful. Yes. yes. And I'm loving, are you wearing Larimar? I'm loving that pendant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. And with mother of pearl on the top, but yeah, yeah. Beautiful. She Beautiful. loves to swim. Sorry, I just lost you for a I second. You for a <laughs> she loves to swim. Oh, yeah. Well, you're so connected to the dolphin energy as well, so... That's beautiful. Mandy, thank you so, so much for joining us. And I look forward to you sharing your wisdom with everyone in 2020. And if they would like to connect with you, what is your best mode of connection on Facebook? Uh, probably Mandy J. Nelson Teacher. Uh, we can put a link at the bottom or um, on my website, www.mandyjnelson.com. Um, yeah, my book will be available on Amazon in the next couple of days so you can get an electronic copy of that. Um, yeah, you can, you could order a copy from me, but it'll be on Book Depository soon as well anyway, so that'll be a much better option. It's such great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your Thanks. message on every level, on your book and in the video. Thank you so much, Mandy. Yeah. Bless you. My pleasure, beautiful one. Thank you. Have a great Christmas. I look forward to seeing you on the other side in 2020. Definitely on the exciting side. <laughs> Bye. Take